I can hold you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome you guys here today. You know, we wanted to hold this press conference because, you know, the North Dakota Police Department have been having their press conferences, and we need to have ours as well and tell our stories. My name is Harold Frazier, and I'm the chairman of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. And I'm looking forward to uh, providing testimony and answering any questions that you may have. Yeah, you know what? My name is Dave Archambault. I'm the chairman of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. And I agree with Harold. You know, there's been a lot of press that came out uh, with false stories. And before anything can be verified, uh, North Dakota media picked it up and ran with it. And there's stories like... Uh, uh, women firing guns and uh, uh, arrows being fired at low-flying aircraft and and before anything has ever been verified a uh, press release goes out and it starts it's starting to try to make what we have accomplished look like uh, a bunch of villains and that's not right and that's not uh, something that uh, is happening and I think you need to know uh, the truth about everything uh, before you air it uh, before you uh, release it as, as a press release and uh, like Harold said the, the county police release their stuff uh, without verifying uh, so we uh, we feel that it's important that we share our story and I'll just uh, I'll, if it's alright Harold I'll just start with uh, you know I think that uh, this has been a unfortunate time for us uh, especially us at Standing Rock because we're in North Dakota and to, to see the aggression that has been placed on uh, people, indigenous people, for standing up for something that they believe. Uh, right now, I, I know, I can honestly say that we have every right to be on that land. I could uh, let you know, as well as I do, that our tribes, uh, including all the Ochete Shakoi tribes, have entered into a contract with the federal government and eight, with our 1851 treaty. And if you ask uh, any of the representatives of North Dakota, Senator Heidkamp, Senator Hoven, Congressman Kramer, Governor Dugard, they cannot honestly tell you that that land was, uh, Ill, was not illegally taken from us. They can't say that. That land was illegally taken from us. Uh, furthermore, the state of North Dakota has laws where corporations cannot own uh, farm and ranch land without a business, a pre-approved business. Uh, that didn't happen. Energy Transfer Partners purchased that property and then they uh, asked for the state of North Dakota to step in and remove us for trespassing on our land uh, and, that, and that's just not right. So the, the North Dakota law enforcement along with law enforcement uh, across the surrounding areas and uh, adjacent states uh, came in with aggression and used weapons uh, to force uh, innocent people backwards and harm was brought. We had over 40 people uh, that were injured. We had broken bones. We had uh, welts from rubber bullets and bean bags fire fired into the crowd. We had sound um, canyons shot. So there's just uh, uh, things that were uh, wrong. Is this wrong to use that type of force uh, on innocent people on our land? Uh, the other, you know, it seems like Energy Transfer Partners is getting protection. Uh, and this is what we're up against. I'll tell you what we're up against. You know, uh, we're standing up for water, and that's been our focus. Uh, water is the most important thing. And we're not just standing up for water for us. We're standing up for water for everybody. Uh, but what we're up against is we have um, the state officials supporting uh, oil production. We have uh, elected state officials receiving contributions from the oil, interest in oil industry. We have uh, state law enforcement militarized. Uh, we have the federal government laws that are flawed, that are wrong, that are allowing this to happen. We have unions 
who are saying we're trying to uh, shut down employment for them. We have the oil industry. With the oil industry, it goes deep. Oil industry is, we could go back to the Bush administration. We could go back and look at what Oliver North did. We can go back and look at who is uh, intertwined with the oil industry. Look at uh, presidential candidate Trump has direct interest to the Dakota Access Pipeline investment. Uh, so, you know, the, the oil industry is, this is a powerful, powerful conglomerate. And uh, we're up against all these forces. And what do we have? Who are we? Standing up for water. You know, all we have is support. All we have is unity. All we have are prayers. Uh, and it's strong, you know, we have, we, we still have a chance. And, and we could still, everybody can still benefit and everybody can still be um, happy. What we have is a opportunity to stop this pipeline from going in this location. You know, we, we have to stop this pipeline from putting water at risk. If we're looking at water and we're trying to protect it, we have to also look at the existing pipelines. We want, we're, we uh, support trade unions. If we want the trade unions uh, to continue to get, we should be investing in uh, refurbishing and remodeling every pipeline that's under the Missouri River now because they were put in at a time where it was dredged. We need to upgrade existing pipelines and we, we need to make sure future laws do not allow for pipelines to cross Missouri River. So let's reroute this pipeline. Uh, this pipeline doesn't have to put our water at risk. It doesn't have to put my tribe at risk. It doesn't have to put our reservation at risk. It doesn't have to put our treaty lands at risk. It can be done and everybody be happy. We'll have energy independence. We'll have national security. We'll have uh, economic development for the state of North Dakota. Well, everybody will be happy. We'll have the politicians still receiving their contributions from the oil industry. Uh, you know, this is uh, not about uh, protectors. It's not about state law enforcement. It's about this company. This is a bad company. Uh, Energy Transfer Partners is in a lawsuit. Lawsuits in four different states for contaminating the environment, for contaminating water. Energy Transfer Partners used unlicensed and untrained dog handlers and guard dogs to attack innocent people. Energy Transfer Partners uh, illegally purchased land in the state of North Dakota. Uh, there's, there's so many wrongs with this company, uh, so many wrongs with the way they construct pipe. We have to start looking at the, the existing pipes that they put in and how many of them uh, were compromised. Uh, this company is not somebody that anybody should be investing in. Uh, anybody should, should, nobody should be protecting this, this company. Uh, and we should all be focused on what can we do to protect water. Because if we don't do that, uh, life is no more. And all you have to do is try once. Uh, try to go without water one time and you'll experience it. You, you'll understand what we're standing up for. And, and our tribe, uh, our people, uh, believe water is sacred. Water is uh, not a resource. It's a relative. And it's um, worth protecting. You know what... Um what happened the other day when they had multiple arrests, you know, it was really alarming to, uh, to our people at home that weren't up there. I had numerous calls throughout the day, and a question that kept coming to my mind is, who is protecting our people? You know, I have had calls from some of our uh, elected leadership at home, and uh, they said, Chairman, what's the plan? How can you make a plan when you're going against guns, weapons? The only thing I could say is we need to stay together and pray. 
You know, the federal government has a trust responsibility to protect us. We are deemed wards of the federal government by their laws, by their courts, but yet they have failed us. That's why I've written a letter to the UN asking for troops to come in and provide peace for our people so they could protest freedom of speech. I have a tribal member who was praying in a sweat lodge that was arrested for praying. How would America feel if I went into their church and pulled them up and arrested them, charged them with riot, a felony for fire? That fire is like water in our culture. It is sacred as well. It provides life to our people. So I cannot believe the inhumane treatment our protectors are being treated by the state. The state has a name, named after our people, Dakota. But yet, <laughs> we're forgotten by the ones who carry our name. And that is really sad and alarming. Our people do need protection. They have rights. Many of our people, Native American people, have volunteered and fought in wars to protect our rights. But yet, again, we're forgotten as Indian people. I think at this time we'll go ahead and open up if you guys have any questions. How was your meeting with President Obama? You know, um, you know, his answers was kind of uh, what I expected, not what I hoped for. Um, you know, they have their game of politics, you know, and I think that at this moment that's what's most important to them. So I was a little disappointed, but, you know, I always feel that we got to try at every angle to try to get some uh, relief and positive for people. So it, it was an important meeting. But I just didn't get the answers that we were hoping for. I have a question of the international media. Two questions, actually. Can you talk about what's happening with people who have been arrested? Any updates on that? And also, we heard reports that there was someone from the pipeline security that was captured with a rifle. Do you have any updates on that? Or? Yeah, the, um, so again, you know, this is Energy Transfer Partners. Uh, what is, what is, what, what have they done? And I listed some. But one thing that we know is that they had an implant. They planted somebody with the camp to disguise and disguise themselves as a water protector. And they, they, uh, they've been there. Uh, they've been roaming through the camps and uh, infiltrating themselves. So uh, we know that this individual uh, was apprehended by the Bureau of Indian, Police, Indian Affairs Police. We know that his vehicle was registered to energy transfer partners, and we have the proof for that. We also have uh, um, proof that he worked for Dakota Access Pipeline. So uh, this is the, what we're up against. We, we say we're uh, prayerful and peaceful, and we try uh, to make sure that it goes uh, throughout everybody, with everybody within the camp to remain nonviolent. But when you have energy transfer partner uh, planting people to agitate the situations, um, it makes things hard uh, to remain careful and peaceful. Uh, so these agitators, um, they, they, they are put there for a reason, uh, to make us look like villains. And we're not villains. You know, we're standing up for water. We're, we're asking uh, the United States uh, Army not to give the easement. Uh, the Dakota Access Pipeline Energy Transfer Partners do not have an easement. They don't have an easement. And yet, they continue to construct. Today, they're constructing uh, without this easement. And uh, it's just not right. You know, when uh, there's public interest and public safety at stake. Uh, but yes, to answer your question, there, there was somebody there. As far as the, um, this individual? yes, he had an uh, assault rifle and he fired it. Uh, so he puts everybody at risk, you know. Uh, when when you 
and that's verified. It's true. You know, this is the this is the type of company that everybody's protecting. This is the type of company that needs to leave North Dakota. It needs to leave South Dakota. It needs to leave Iowa. It needs to leave Illinois. This is not a, a, a respectable uh, company. What's driving this company is money and greed. Uh, what, what's driving us is prayer and peace and, and the protection of water and environment. Yesterday, one of the things I did in reference to the individual that was arrested by the BIA is I asked him for a full report. And it was really disappointing that their response was that we will have to file a freedom of information to get that report on the individual. And I think that's really important. I was told by one of our veterans that was there when he was arrested that he had live rounds, you know, and he did point. I seen a video. There's a video out there that he pointed a weapon at a, a lady. And I told the BIA yesterday that I think this individual needs to be charged with attempted murder. You know, we got to protect our people. And I, I also been getting reports that are people that have been arrested and treated in, inhumanely. You know, um, they're uh, putting dog kennels. They're uh, numbered like Holocaust people. And that is not right. So I take offense to the way they're getting treated while they're in incarceration. Can you mention the FOI, the Freedom of Information Act, a bit one more time, please? Well, that's a process that if we want information from a federal agency that we have to file uh, our lawyers uh, I'm going to have our lawyers on Monday file and it could take from two months to six months but I'm also going to continue every day every time I see a BIA person I'm going to be putting pressure on them that we need that report because that's important you know because they're saying our people are the villains or the, the criminals well, what about them you know, and this report will be true. Another thing I'm doing, because I, I don't like their, the way reporting is going, is that I'm going to, Grand River Sioux Tribe is going to be sending up police force, some of our police officers, to monitor. Yes. Because that's something that's not happening. Is um, federal government, even President Obama said he has federal monitors there. But I haven't gotten a report. I haven't seen. So that's what we're going to be doing from our tribe is sending up police officers. Thank you. Is there any? The Department of Justice has been here, uh, and they've been trying. Uh, it's, it's, they they want to uh, assist in negotiation uh, with the state law enforcement and with uh, the protectors and with the tribe. Uh, the problem is, as much, uh, uh, no matter how much we uh, come together, the company still continues to construct. So how can we sit down and, and try to come up with solutions when this com company, this bad company, is still uh, pursuing construction and everybody seems to be protecting them, protecting them. So they want us to sit down and, and, and communicate and to talk while this con company continues uh, construction. So, and, and that's, that's, I asked them, if you want to sit down and talk, tell the company to stop working then. Dave, can you tell us uh, what the agenda is for the upcoming November 17th meeting in Rapid City? So, uh, uh, Natalie is asking about uh, consultation. One of the things that the Department of Justice, Department of Interior, and, and uh, Department of Army did was they, they said, we're not going to give an easement for anything to cross 